Remember in packet one when we talked about the properties of equality and the algebraic properties? Those are going to be crucial for packet three. In packet three, we are going to be rearranging formulae, which is the plural for formula. So we're going to be looking at a formula and rearranging it for a different variable than it has set up already. So we are going to be using those algebraic properties. So if you need to review those real quick, pause the video, pull out your packet one, because we're gonna be referring to those quite a bit here in the next few minutes. But let's go ahead and get started. So first and foremost, foremost, we need to talk about what a formula is. So formulas have multiple variables and you know several formulas. The formula for area, for example, is length times width or base times height. The formula for perimeter would be length plus width plus length plus width or 2L plus 2W. So you know several formulas. We just have to work on rearranging them for a certain variable whichever variable they tell us they want us to rearrange it for. So all formulas have multiple variables, so you're gonna see multiple letters in each one of these formulae. Our first step is going to be circling the letter that we're solving for, so that way we remember what are we actually trying to do? Which variable are we trying to get by itself? Our goal is to isolate the circled variable on one side of the equal sign by using the same properties we used when solving one variable equations and inequality. So we're using the same steps that we used in packets one and packets two, but we're gonna see less numbers and more letters. And then lastly, if we have a coefficient that's a fraction, we have to multiply both sides by its reciprocal. So we talked about this in packet one. If you have a fraction, you need to multiply by the denominator to get rid of that fraction. So example number one says that the formula for finding the area of a triangle is A equals one half B H, where B is the length of the base and H is the height of the triangle. Suppose you know the area and height of the triangle but need to find the length of the base. In this case, solving the formula for B would be helpful. So here we are solving the formula for B. We are trying to get B by itself. So when I finish, my equation should say something like B equals. So step one is begin isolating B by multiplying both sides of the equation by the reciprocal, reciprocal of one half, which is two. So the reciprocal of any fraction is the same fraction just flipped over. So the reciprocal of A over B is B over A. So the reciprocal of one over two is two over one. That cancels out the fraction. So same thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw my line down my equal side, and that's gonna help me determine my left from my right. So I need to get rid of this fraction, so I am going to multiply both sides by two over one. So I'm multiplying by the reciprocal. I'm going to multiply A by two over one. Two over one is just two. So this two over one cancels out that one half, and on the right hand side, I'm left with B H. We have an equal sign, so I'm gonna drop down that equal sign. Two over one times A, or two times A, is two A. So I have two A equals B H. So the only thing I did was get rid of that fraction by multiplying by the reciprocal. Remember that whenever you have two variables or a number and a variable right next to each other, you know there's multiplication in the middle. So this is the same thing as B times H. To get rid of this H, or to isolate the B, I'm going to have to divide both sides by H. When I do that, the H cancels out on the right, and I have B by itself, which is my goal. So I have two A over H equals B. And that would be my final answer. Once you've isolated, oh, that was step two. Once you've isolated or gotten the variable that you're looking for completely alone, you're done with the problem. So once we got B alone, we knew we were done with this problem. Let's go through another example. Um, so we can practice using those properties of equality given variables. So example number two says the distance d that a train can travel is found by multiplying the rate of speed r by the amount of time that it is traveling, t, or d equals rt. So the distance equals the rate times the time. 
Solve this formula for t to find the amount of time the train will be traveling for travel given a specific distance and rate of speed. So we are trying to get t by itself. So it says solve this formula for t. So I'm trying to get t all alone. So I have d equals rt, which is the same thing as d equals r times t. So I'm going to draw my line down my equal sign. I'm trying to get t by itself. So to get rid of this r, I have to use the inverse operation of multiplication. In your head right now, you should be saying, well, the inverse operation of multiplication is division. So I'm going to divide both sides by r. This cancels out the r on the right, and I have t all by itself. So I have d over r equals t, and that would be my final answer. Once your variable is by itself, you know you did it right. Example number two asks you a follow-up question. So for this one, they don't want you just to simplify it. They want you to use it to then solve a problem. So they said, how long will it take Ricky to travel 720 miles at an average speed of 65 miles an hour? So 720 miles is going to be my distance. The speed is going to be my rate. So I have my d over r equals t. That's what we just solved for. So I could say 720 over 65 equals t. I can do that in my calculator. I could either divide 720 divided by 65, or I could do a fraction. So this is a good review for the TI-84 calculator. To put a fraction in the calculator, you click alpha y equals enter, 720 over 65 enter and we get 144 over 13. For this problem, because we don't want our answer in a fraction, we are going to just divide it. But remember, fractions are division. So 720 divided by 65 is 11.07. So we're just gonna say 11 hours. So the time would be equal to 11 hours. And we know that the time is in hours because we have miles per hour. And in our equation, we use miles um, and miles per hour. So our time unit would be hours because that's the only time unit given to us in this problem. On the back side, we're going to go through a couple more examples before um, we get to our in-class review. So example number three says convert degrees Celsius to Kelvin. The formula K equals C plus 273.15 is used. Solve the formula for C. So this time we're trying to get C by itself. So I have K equals C plus 273.15. I'm going to draw my line down my equals sign. I'm trying to get C by itself. So I'm trying to get this C completely alone. First thing I notice is I have a plus 273.15 that I do not want there. The inverse operation for addition is subtraction, so I'm going to subtract 273.15 from both sides. That's going to zero out on the right. K minus 273.5 cannot be simplified. K is a variable, negative 273.5 is a constant, so I could only simplify this to say k minus 273.15 equals c. The only thing left on the right hand is c. So this one was a little bit easier. It was a one-step equation. So c is equal to k minus 273.5. So you could write that the other way, like this. So either way, it's the same thing. You have your C on one side of the equal sign and the K minus 273.15 on the other side of that equal sign. Example number four reads, the formula C equals two pi R is used to calculate the circumference of a circle. Solve this formula for R. So I have two, mm -mm. I have C equals two pi R and I'm trying to get this R completely by itself. So I have two times pi times r equals c. Remember when you have a number and a symbol, 
or a number and a variable right next to each other, that is multiplication. So to cancel out multiplication, I know I need to divide. Because I have two things next to the R that I need to divide, I can divide both of them out at the same time. So I'm going to divide by 2P. That's going to cancel out this 2, and this is going to cancel out that pi. I meant 2 pi. I said 2P, I meant 2 pi. Talking too fast. So when both of them are canceled out on the right, you're left with only R, C over 2 pi. Think about that. Can that be simplified? No, it can't. C is a variable, 2 is a number, and pi is a symbol. None of those can be combined because none of those are like terms. So we are going to leave it as C over 2 pi. That's as simplified as it gets. So notice in our rearranging formulas, we're left with all the same variables and all the same numbers. So for example, in this one, we started out with K equals C plus 273.15. So we had a K, we had a C, and we had 273.15. In my final answer, I have my K, I have my C, and I have my 273.15. I'm not changing anything. I'm just moving everything around using the properties of equality so that the, it doesn't change the formula. It's just rearranged for a different variable. So that's a great way to check it. So once you get your final answer, all the components should still be there. If you started out with an X, a Y, and a 5, your final answer should have an X somewhere, a Y somewhere, and a 5 somewhere because you're not, mo you're not getting rid of anything. You're just moving and shuffling everything around using those properties of equality. So let's do one more example and then we'll do these three examples when you get to class tomorrow. So example number five says the formula V equals LWH is used to calculate the volume of a prism. Solve the formula for W. So this is going to be very similar to here. So we have volume equals the length times the width times the height. So again, two variables next to each other, or a number and a variable, or a number and a symbol is multiplication. So this is the same thing as length times width times height. And I am trying to get this W by itself. So because I have times between all of these, I know I'm going to have to divide. <coughs> I need to divide out an L and I need to divide out an H. When I divide out the L, that'll cancel. When I divide out the H, that'll cancel. Whatever I do to the right, I must do to the left. That's the division property of equality. If I do it to the right hand side, I have to do it to the left hand side. And that's why drawing the line is helpful because it helps you differentiate, well, what's on the right and what's on the left. So when I do that, I have to divide by L H. So I have V over L H equals W. Can that be simplified? No, it can't be simplified because this is a V, this is an L, and this is an H. Not only do you have only variables, you have all different variables. So let's do our little trick. Do we have all the same components that we started with? I started with a V, L, W, and H. V, L, W, and H. I have all my components, they're just shuffled around. So I know that I did it right. Next class, we will do these three examples and we will practice rearranging formulae because it's not only an important skill for math, but you're actually gonna use it in some of your science classes coming up soon too. So I will see you soon in next class.